In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the most fascinating new features for Comfy UI and SDXL in Stable Diffusion. And this is coming from Stability AI themselves. It's called Control Loras, and we'll be looking at what it involves in this video. But before we get into that, I want to remind you guys that I have got a course over at Udemy for learning generative AI with SDXL, Stable Diffusion, and Comfy UI. Now the course has already had about 60 students and it has expanded to about six hours, including about two hours on prompt engineering. This is probably one of the most transferable skills in generative AI. So if you meet the uh, course requirements, head on over to the page and uh, I'll give you access to a fat discount if you want to sign up today. Now, currently I'm actually working on a lecture, not for that course, but for a new course, which is going to cover some of the more advanced features. And we're going to be looking at things like control nets and looking at how to use control nets to create images like this. So for the time being, I'm not actually able to demonstrate anything using Comfy UI because I'm right in the middle of the core of, of the lecture right now. But what we'll do is that we'll discuss the features that have been introduced by Stability AI. So if you want to go over to Hugging Face, we now have what they're calling Control Loras. And Control Loras are, it, it, it's, a, it's a name that I'm a little bit not sure about, but essentially it is a form of neural network that allows you to control the images that are produced inside of Stable Diffusion just by using images. So you're gonna have the old word prompts, but we're also going to have image prompts and we're going to have prompts like uh, the depth map, which allows you to create images with a sense of depth using the uh, depth map, the control net or the control LoRa, and also whatever word prompts you want to use. So you can see the basic idea demonstrated here, depth map. Then we have some words telling us what type of images we want to produce. Now they've also got Canny Edge and we covered Canny Edge in a previous video where we were using this huge five gigabyte control net. And uh, with these ones, they actually have gone for something different. They've, they've gone for two types of files. In the first one, the rank 256 files, they have reduced a five gigabyte control net uh, model down to under one gigabyte. And they say this control LoRa is experimental not sure what that means. And they have another one, which is rank 128. This has been reduced down to 376 megabytes. So these are much, much smaller. And it'll be interesting to test these so that we can see just how efficient they are compared to the massive uh, five gigabyte control nets that we looked at in a previous video. Now, what they're saying here is that this approach offers a more efficient and compact method to bring model control to a wider variety of consumer GPUs. So that might be something that's relevant to you. The, the, the other control LoRa that they have introduced is what they call the photo, photograph and sketch colorizer. And all I ask of this one, all I ask is that it works better than the one inside of Photoshop because that one, uh, I've had some fun and games with one inside of Photoshop. This one, They've got an example here. It'll be interesting to see how well this works in real life. And they've got a sketch one, which works with obviously artificial images. And there's also something called revision, which if I click on that, we can take a, a bit of a closer look at it. It is fascinating. So it looks like we're actually taking multiple images and doing amazing things with them. Here, they've got four separate images that they're working with. I want to see exactly how this works and I'm really, really fascinating to see, to see how everything comes together. What they say of revision is revision is a novel approach of using images to prompt SDXL. It uses pooled clip embeddings to produce images conceptually similar to the input. It can be used in either in addition or to replace text prompts. So here we are completely replacing text prompts. Revision also includes a blending function for multiple images or text concepts as either positive or negative prompts. 
that's going to be fascinating. So I want to see how these work. I want to compare them to the control nets. And I want to see what innovation and improvements have come up with these new designs. One of the criticisms of control nets, which are very popular in other software, uh, Automatic 1111, is that they tend to be resource heavy. They require systems that have a powerful GPU and you may struggle without, uh, without having a really powerful system. That's one of the reasons I've been very reluctant to include them on the course. And I might actually come up with a new course for these more powerful features which require higher system requirements. Now, one of the things that we were waiting for, and I mentioned this in a previous video, was Stability AI's implementation of control nets. We've got it now and it looks fascinating. I'm going to bet without having tried these that they're much, much more efficient than the control net. The one that I showed you last week, you're waiting 15, 20 minutes if you have a slow system half an hour for just one image render. So I'm betting that these ones are going to be much, much more efficient. That's what I'm expecting. And that's one of the reasons I've been a bit reluctant to include control nets on the course, because I want to see what Stability AI are coming up with. It's bound to be interesting. Now, this is a recolor example. As you can see, a black and white image and made it into color. Again, like I say, just be better than Photoshop. <laughs> and that's all we ask for. And finally, uh, th th they have an image here showing you the use of one of the uh, new nets, one of the new LoRa's inside of uh, Swarm UI. So Stable Swarm UI is a user inter interface which actually, if we click on this, we can see a bit closer. It actually builds on top of Comfy UI. So it's a tabbed user interface, which will be more familiar to people who've used Automatic 1111. Um, and it's going to be one which is built on top of Comfy UI. So it is not a an attempt to repeat what happened inside of uh, Automatic 1111. None of us want that because Automatic 1111 does Automatic 1111 really well. And we want Comfy UI and Swarm UI to do its stuff really well. Now, it can actually be used with Comfy UI. I have installed this and I have started to use it. You can tell just by looking at it that it is in the early stages of development. It's not yet perfect and it does work, but I want to see a bit more development before I cover it in depth. But this is the kind of thing I want to try to incorporate into the new course, maybe give it until it's actually in beta phase, and then we'll see what it looks like when it's finally published. One of the things that this thing can do is it can actually use multiple GPUs together. And that's something people have been asking me about. Uh, I'm going to try to cover that in a different video where we talk about GPUs, but it's an interesting uh, new development. I'm really fascinated to see how this is going to evolve. And as you can see, you can use the new control LoRa's inside of Swarm UI. So I want to see how that turns out. And finally, I want to mention that I have a brief survey uh, and this is going to uh, be about the control nets inside of SDXL and control LoRa's, whether or not you've used them, whether or not you've actually used them, just take a survey, it just requires a couple of uh, answers. And I want to know what your experience is with this uh, type of software uh, in SDXL. So I'll link to this uh, quick survey. Doesn't matter whether you've used these things or not, there is a, there's an option there for you. And hopefully, want to learn what your experience is using the, the, these new uh, these new features. Guys, that's going to be it for this one. I will probably have an update which talks a little bit more about the new control LoRa's and I may have quite a bit more stuff happening in the membership for the channel where I put quite a lot of stuff before it goes up onto the course because I can just put up anything onto the YouTube membership. Whereas when I put things onto the course, it has to be organized, has to be coherent and rational. And it does take a couple of weeks before I can actually upload and update the courses. I'll have some updates on whether and when the new course is going to be available. And uh, certainly for people in the YouTube membership, I'll have some discounts for the new course. Guys, that is going to be it. Uh, I'll see you soon.